proud main sponsors of the event are Sport Event Denmark, Slagelsa Commune, and these other sponsors. This program is brought to you by Live Signal, high quality live streams and TV broadcast. LiveSignal.tv Hello friends of Quality Motorsport. The 2018 sidecar and quad cross season is now behind us. As always, the season closer is the sidecar and quad cross of nations. And this year, the prestigious trophy was fought for in Denmark near the town of Sligels in the scenic region of Zealand. This is where the famous writer Hans Christian Andersen went to primary school, where he studied and took the test to get the skills which made him famous. It was also a big test in Slegels for all the national teams taking part in this year's Race of Nations. There are a dozen national sidecar cross teams lining up with as many as 20 turning up for the quad cross discipline. Now the next 50 minutes will guide you through this great event crammed with drama and excitement. So make yourselves comfortable, we're about to kick off. Slagels is located about 100 kilometers from Denmark's capital Copenhagen and has 33,000 residents. Sidecar cross races have been held here for decades with the World Championship last year in 2010. The local motocross track is definitely among the smallest in a very compact area. The surface of the track is sandy which digs out very deeply. This makes things tricky in a straight line and even worse in the turns. Saturday qualifying already gave a fantastic taste of things to come. Judge for yourselves. All right, Americans, here we go. Into the first turn. And the whole shot goes to the number 49, the number 49 rider. Thomas Brown will come in and take the checkered flag. So well done to the Americans. It's the Latvian pairing. Here's oh. back. Oh! And here they come towards the finish line. Up yes. back goes to the inside. Yes, nice move. Oh, and oh, Bax. Bax is out. That's been an awesome ride. Absolutely awesome ride from the world champion. The start is everything. And it's the 53. And Edgar Spengler brings it around. We'll get the checkered flag and the win in Group B. Oh, but it's turned over. Oh, no. Oh, oh and Bax is trying to run over it. Oh, Williamson stopped. Well done to Brett. Well done to Dan Chamberlain. From the outside, it's looking good. No, he does pull it. So Chad Wheaton with the whole shot. That 
the way to the gate and the gate is dropped. Away we go now. Sanders has oh stole it. Oh my goodness. Davy Sanders has stole it. In Saturday qualifying for quads, the American trio Brown, Rastrelli and Wienan dominated despite the fact they're not renowned as sand specialists. In addition to the 12 national teams, the republics of Hungary, Estonia and Finland made it through to the Sunday races. In sidecar cross qualifying, it was the Belgians who triumphed, but Dierkins and Rostang were injured in the morning warm-up, putting them out of contention for the main races. So these are six other national sidecar cross teams. That was Saturday, but now we move to Sunday, and this is what it's all about. The main event for the precious points and the final ranking. The first to go were the intrepid quad men, and in this category, the Americans have dominated this discipline for what seems like forever. The question was, would they hack it on a sandy, loose surface that they hardly ever come across in the United States? The competitors were divided into three groups, A, B and C, with two team members in each race. In race one, groups A and B went together. The best start was made by Argentinian Jose Guerra, who grabbed the whole shot and hit the front. Already in turn one, there was a big tangle, delaying several of the four-wheeled hopefuls. Jose Guerra, number 19, and Jeff Rastrelli, number two, disputed the lead. There was more trouble in turn two, with Norwegian Lars Holman involved, knocking him back to 13th. Meanwhile, the front pair were hard at it, with Jose Guerra and Jeff Rastrelli giving it their best shot. And as you can see, Rastrelli was not happy playing second fiddle. Guerra uses a Yamaha quad and Rastrelli is a loyal Honda man, so this was also a battle between two of the world's leading manufacturers. Apart from Guerra and Rastrelli, another member of the US team going well was Thomas Brown. He carried number one on his Yamaha special, was soon in the fight at the front. The American team was in Denmark defending the title they won in Cingoli, Italy, just a year ago. Thomas Brown was thrilled to get the better of his compatriot Rastrelli and moved to second place. Then it was the turn of Guerra at the front to feel the hot breath of Brown. The technical problem caused the retirement of the Hungarian rider Richard Gonchol, so it was game over for the Hungarian team in race one. Jose Guerra continued to be in the driving seat with Thomas Brown unable to find a way past his Argentinian rival. Still third was Rastrelli, so the Americans had a great start in race one with the intensity of Brown's attacks growing. Latvian Edgars Mengelis was fourth and fifth Kevin Saar for Estonia. Thomas Brown finally got the better of Guerra and the American number one went ahead. Now it was Jeff Rastrelli's turn to hassle the Argentinian Guerra. He was right on him. But Guerra turned the wick up with Rastrelli now in the focus of other rivals like Edgar's Mengelis, number 53, and the number 43, Kevin Saar. In six was the Belgian rival David de Kuyper, and in seventh, Dutchman Joe Massen. 
fight for third place raged between America, Latvia and Estonia, namely Jeff Rastrelli, Edgar Mengelis and Kevin Sarr. Up front, Thomas Brown and Jose Guerra, representing America and Argentina, continued their fight, but the trio of Rastrelli, Mengelis and Saar were closing in. So race one on Sunday was a great show, and the Slagels crowd who'd been here since early morning already had their money's worth of action. And it was not over yet as Kevin Saar closed in on the Belgian David de Kuyper and the Dutchman Joe Masson. So we now had a five-strong group all disputing third place. It could not possibly stay that way for much longer. And that's exactly what happened. First, Estonia Kevin Saar got tangled up with the Latvian Mengelis, and then Belgian De Kuyper and the Dutch Massen joined the party. The big winner from this chaos was the Polish rider Roman Gwiazda, who jumped from eighth to fourth. It also helped Justin Reed from Ireland and Sheldon Seal from Great Britain. Justin Reed suddenly closed in on the top five. At this stage of the race, it was a clear victory for Thomas Brown, who was on target for one point on his Yamaha for first place. This is just the rating in the race, so the team with the least points is declared the winner. The worst individual score is dropped, however, and that worked well for the Americans. Thomas Brown actually had a mechanical problem, which robbed him of the win. Argentinian Jose Guerra, number 19, regained the lead. To put one over the Americans in this sport is everyone's dream. And Jose Guerra was not far away from fulfilling that dream. There was not much time left to the finish, and although Rastrelli tried all he knew, it was simply not enough to beat the Argentinian. The first of the three quad cross races had a surprising winner in the shape of the man from Argentina. In the top six came two Dutchmen, a nice third for the Pole Gviazda, and thanks to the triumph of Guerra, Argentina sat on top. And that's another six riders in race one. I don't speak English, sorry, but... Vamos Argentina, carajo! Vamos! 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 But now we're moving to three wheels on the world of sidecar cross. Here, a total of 12 national teams were entered here in Denmark, with the same Dutch team defending the title from last year. That was not the case for the three young Czech crews all making their debut. The whole shot went to the Latvian crew of Dintis Gorbenko and Tanon Goyev. They had a great start and made the most of it. The new world champions Marvin van Luken and Ben van der Bergart were right behind the Latvians. In third was Daniel Willemsen and Robbie Banks, with the French team fourth, and in fifth, the Czech brothers Jan and Pavel Buka. In turn two, there was a massive crash involving those further down the field. Meanwhile, at the front, there was a huge battle between Latvian Gorbenko and the much-favoured Belgian Van Luken. Frenchman Bastian Thomas moved to third place, but this fight for the lead had everyone on their toes.
Van Luken and Van den Bogaard were hungry for it, but Gorbenko and Koev were not so easy. Then Van Luken had a moment and lost direct contact with the race leader. They hung on to second place as Gorbenko and Koev made the most of it. Third were the French, fourth the Dutch, and fifth the young Czechs. Jan and Pavel Bukal, Italian Lasagna brothers Ivo and Ivan, plus the Swiss Heinzer and Betchard were also in trouble. From a second row start, double world champion Dutchman Etienne Bax and Latvian Kaspis Stupelis were going well and got the better of compatriots Daniel Willemsen and Robbie Bax. He's the younger brother of Etienne. The number one crew, Bax and Stupelis, moved to fourth place with another challenge ahead of them, Thomas and Van der Putin. <laughs> Meanwhile, Marvin Van Luken and Ben van der Bogart closed in once more on the leading Latvians, Gorbenko and Koyev. And joining the party at the front came Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis. Marvin van Luken was keen to show that he was a deserving Sycar Cross World Champion, just as Gorbenko was keen to keep him out. As they fought, Etienne Bax joined in, making it a fascinating fight for the win between these three crews. Van Luken had chosen an outside line that seemed faster, but it wasn't, and he got stuck, with the same thing happening to Frenchman Bastian Thomas. So the Latvians, this is Gorbenko and Tanel Koev held on. Second place was still taken by Marvin van Luken and Ben van der Bogart, with Etienne Bax and Kaspis Stupelis in third. But they were not finished yet and swiftly moved to second place. Gorbenko and Koev now had a problem, and that was Bax and Stupelis. Gorbenko was immediately under pressure from Bax, who obviously meant business. Van Lukenen and Van den Bogart dropped to third as Daniel Willemsen, the ten times world champion, began to close in. Relentless pressure from Etienne Bax eventually weakened the Latvian Gorbenko and Bax prevailed. Race one of three now had new leaders, Etienne Bax and Kaspers Stupelis. Now, this pair is very strong in the sand, as everyone in Slagels could see. In third came more Dutchmen, Daniel Willemsen and Robbie Bax, as Marvin van Luken fell victim to the Frenchman Bastian Thomas. The new world champion then dropped to fifth. With a clear track ahead and his own pace, Etienne Bax pushed on with four chasers behind him. Didzis Gorbenko was under yet more pressure with Daniel Willemsen and Robbie Bax giving him a hard time. Bastian Thomas and Sieva van der Putin were also not far away. And here Daniel Willemsen shows his class and experience overtaking on this difficult track. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis, meanwhile, were lapping the tail enders, and this is always tricky. But Bax coped really well and took it all in his stride. It was not the case for everyone, though, especially those without sand experience. Nothing changed at the front, and after a fantastic performance, the race win fell to Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis, securing the first point for the Dutch team. And again, we emphasize that the team with the lowest score wins. For the Dutch, the defence of last year's title started well. In second place, it was Daniel Willemsen and Robbie Bax for two points. First and second, it doesn't get better than that. But also raise your hands for the brilliant Latvians who ranked third and tenth on their debut. And there were other promising results. The Brits, Wilkinson and Chamberlain were in the hunt, and Van Luken and Van den Bogart were fifth.
A surprising eighth was taken by the young Czech pair Jan and Pavel Bukal. Yeah, we're struggling uh, with the starts already all season, you know, we, we tried to find the problem uh, and solve that, but at this moment we, we did not solve it. So we talked with the team and uh, I, I, I thought it was best to let us start from the second row, because uh, Daniel is, uh, is mostly good in the start and, uh, and Kun Hermans as well, so let this, that guys uh, be in the front and uh, we come from behind. Yeah, and uh, it went out very well actually, because we, can, we could stand on the inside and uh, yeah, we, we could take... Uh, actually a fifth or a sixth position in the start, so we were quite happy. The morning part of the programme closed with the second race of the quad cross involving the riders from groups B and C. And yet again, there were two members from each national team in the race. Jeff Rastrelli and Chad Wiener were the big favourites. For Rastrelli, it was his second race, whilst Wiener was out for the first time. The best start went to the number 12 Dutchman, Mike Van Grinsman, who grabbed the whole shot and went ahead. But his delight didn't last long as the American Chad Wienan got past. But next came a good fight involving the German Manfred Zinecker, Argentina Sebastian Molina, Latvian Edgar Zmengelis and the Irishman Mark McLernan. Also there was Jeff Rastrelli with Britain Harry Walker. All races on Sunday were 25 minutes plus two laps, regardless of the number of wheels, three or four, it's all the same. And there was plenty going on throughout. It was a real spectacle in glorious weather. This was the third fantastic race on Sunday morning, with lots more still to come. Cyclocross Cross and Quad Cross of Nations is a really popular event, with fans of both disciplines always supporting their own. Here they enjoy the passing of Jeff Rastrelli, who fought Sebastian Molina and then collided with Edgar Zmengelis and Mark McLernan. The second quad race was simply a really tough battle with plenty of action and lots of hard moves. Look at this, for example. Sebastian Molina, Edgar Zmengelis, Harry Walker and Joe Masson. Number 15, Brent Harry Walker, was a class act on his Yamaha special. In this case, he wore down the Argentinian Sebastian Molina and went ahead. After a very good performance, Harry Walker won third place for Great Britain, with George Calloway supporting the fourth place finish. Jeff Rastrelli also went well, and so the second race turned out well for the United States. Manfred Zinecker and Mark McLernan fought it out, while race two was not good for Lars Holman from Norway. Sebastian Molina and Harry Walker covered every inch of the track, but still banged between McLernan and Zinecker. The race for the Belgians, especially turf hoof with a wayward KTM, was very interesting. British rider Harry Walker, who overtakes Argentina, Sebastian Molina, had scrapped with several others on his way up the order. Latvian Enger Megalis tried the same, but that didn't come off. Quite the opposite, in fact. His effort cost him time here. His fellow team member, Valerys Kuzmins, had a KTM which simply gave up the ghost to refuse. So he was out, and the Latvian team had just one member surviving. Not so the American Chad Wienan, who was doing his own thing with a huge lead. Nobody else was even in the same ballpark as Wienan and his Yamaha.
Nicely second was Dutchman Mike van Grinsman, and he too had a significant lead over the rest. The man from the Tulip country was looking good for a great result, which would put the Dutch in a very strong position again in this year's event. Mike van Grinsen was keen to match his compatriots in the first race, in which they were fourth and fifth, so that was looking good. After a bad start, the other American rider, Jeff Rastrelli, made his way through eventually to second place. Rastrelli on his Honda was steady and fully focused on his performance, but also capitalised on the troubles of his rivals, such as the Dutchman, Mike van Grinsen. He lost a lot of time and position in this tricky spot, and he wound up 17th. But in complete control of race two was Chad Wiener. He was unbelievable. On the other hand, Mike McLernan was out with mechanical problems. Sad news indeed for the Irish team. The end of this race was in sight, and this time there was no repeat of the scenario from race one. Both Americans were strong, and the bikes behaved flawlessly. The quad cross star, Jad Wienan, made it a one-man show and added another single point for victory. Before the start, there'd been a lot of talk about the Americans not being able to handle the sandy track with a trophy going somewhere else. Well, opinion could not have been more wrong. We didn't show that. He won convincingly on his Yamaha and was miles ahead of the flag. Right now, it was clear that the title of the world champions in the quad race of nations was going only one way. Especially when the US pair made it a 1-2, thanks to Jeff Rastrelli on his Honda. In a brilliant third place came the young Brit, Harry Walker. In fourth place, confirming the great quality of the British team was George Calloway, fifth Sebastian Molina, and sixth the Finn, Jesse Usitalo. And that's how the other six riders were in race two. Came out to a really good start, got second, and uh, Ben Grizzen, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, uh, just made a quick move on him with a couple laps in, and I just tried to hit my marks and uh, about midway through I started really finding some good lines and some tight insides that really uh, were, were not as deep so that really paid off in the end and uh, that traffic about three quarters of the way through was really tough to get through as well but uh, you know we got it done and uh, one two for the team this is all what it's all about it's not about me it's about our our team Team USA and uh, man we ripped it really well and uh, we got one more motor to go and uh, Thomas and I would be on the gate so we're gonna give everything we got to try to get this overall. Now it's Sunday afternoon with three more delicious races on the menu. Unlike the morning program, we have two sidecar cross races and just one quad cross. From the word go, sidecar cross groups B and C were put together. The best start was by French crew Valentin Giro and Jean Bader, with Kern Hermans and Nicolas Musset also starting well for Holland. The Germans, Eddie Janaka and Gordon Boto, were not nearly so lucky and they struggled off the line. Valentin Giro and the French team of Jean Bader stayed in front, with Kern Hermans and Nicolas Musset behind them from the beginning. Italians Pozzi and Volti started well, and in fourth place were Davy Sanders and Andres Haller riding for Belgium. Behind 
and there were another 26 sidecar pairings. Valentin Giro is absolutely world class and in Denmark he tried for the first time in his life a two-stroke engine. Moreover, Sam's not his favourite going, so we wondered how long he could hold off this year's runner-up, Dutchman Kern Hermans. And as you can see, it was not for long. Kern Hermans in the sand, like every Dutchman, is a sand meister, and that applied equally here in Slegelsa. Valentin Giro, however, was coping with a chasing group led by Italian Hotmar Pozzi and followed by Belgian David Sanders number nine. He was pressured by Britain's Brett Wilkinson with longtime co-driver Daniel Chamberlain. This battle included the Lithuanian brothers Yanis and Loris Didas, who fought hard with the British crew. However, Brett Wilkinson and Dan Chamberlain were not phased by this and attacked their Latvian rivals again and again. It was a heavy attack and this was an interesting battle and then number two Daniel Willemsen arrived on the scene with Wilkinson. Daniel Willemsen and Robbie Bax were in the second and final race, which was actually their last race together because they're parting for the new season. Italians Hotmar Pozzi and Simon Volti were surprised by the third place, but Davy Sanders and Andres Haller were fighting hard. Brothers Yanis and Loris Diders were fifth, demonstrating their good teamwork. Sixth were Daniel Willemsen and Robbie Bax, with Brett Wilkinson and Dan Chamberlain in seventh. So we had yet another five-way scrap to keep us all entertained, and entertained we were. And this group, surprisingly, were behind the Italians, who were not really on the radar much before the start of this event. But there was every chance things would change, because there was a lot of time left before the chequered flag came out. The Diders boys, who were by now past Sanders and Haller, were the first to attack, and it was now the Italians Pozzi and Volti in fourth. And Wilkinson and Chamberlain, who managed to pass Daniel Willems and Robbie Bax, also picked their move. The Dutch crew fell to seventh place. Brett Wilkinson was inspired, and this time the victim was Davy Sanders. Wilkinson and Chamberlain moved to fifth place and did not stop there. And all eyes were now on the progress of the British team. Was there more to come? But Italy was holding firm. There was no great expectation of Hotmar Pozzi, but he amazed everyone as he kept a whole gang behind him, lap after lap. Totally alone, Kern Hermans and Nicola Mousset, silver medalists in this year's title chase, were sailing on at the sharp end. Second place still belonged to Frenchman Valentin Giro and Johnny Bader. As we've said, Giro was having a two-stroke debut and the signs were very, very good indeed. Still, Italy with Pozzi and Volti held third, followed by a pack of hung hungry dogs. In fourth were the Diders, fifth Wilkinson and Chamberlain, sixth Sanders and Haller, and seventh Willemsen and Bax. But Brett Wilkinson again attacked and made the move on Yanis Diders. In the case of the British crew, it was a move to fourth. 
Janis and Loris Dylas eventually managed to overtake the Italian rivals, and in, as indeed did Wilkinson. Otmar Potsi was unable to keep third to the finish line and, as expected, he started to drop away. In this case, he dropped to fifth place and eventually lost two more places. The Diders brothers completed the race in fourth, Sanders and Haller scored fifth, and in sixth came Daniel Willemsen and Robbie Bax. Technical gremlin struck the French crew of Bouquet and Chopin, so it was a fact that their DNF would be the score dropped. And it was also clear that the Dutch contingent would take the solitary victory point as Kern Hermans and Nicolas Musset were unbelievable. The silver medal crew of the World Championship were a class apart, not giving a single inch to anyone. That made the entire Dutch team very happy indeed. Talk about sand specialists. With eyes on second place, the British Brett Wilkinson and Dan Chamberlain went through and managed to overcome the French resistance of Giro and Badère. And fourth, Janis and Loris Diders just made it by the skin of their teeth, having turned off the engine just before the finish. So race two in the sidecar cross was dominated by the Dutch who were well placed to repeat their victory just like last year's nation's competition. And these are the standings for national teams after race two. Yeah, of course, we are close of the victory now. Uh, we have a good race today. Yesterday was not a good day for us, but uh, yeah, Team Holland is coming back on this day. And now we're getting to the final race in the quad cross category. It'll decide whether the Americans will celebrate victory again. Thomas Brown and Chad Veenan were carrying the Stars and Stripes. The best start by Dutchman Mike Van Grinsman with Thomas Brown finding a lot of bumps in turn one. This baptism of fire was soon extinguished, however, and calm and normal business was restored. Mike Van Grinsman held the lead with Patrick Torini second. In third was the Belgian David de Kuiper and fourth the American Brown. Turn two became very busy indeed due to the deep ruts after the sidecar race. Nothing changes, does it? Dutchman Van Grinsman managed to go all the way fast and kept his momentum. Behind him, Thomas Brown made it to third after a good battle with Belgian David de Kuiper. After a bad start, Chad Wienan, winner of the quad race two, second race of the quad cross, was also scrapping with Belgium and immediately pushed on after the Italian rider Patrick Torini, who was also by then up for grabs. Americans simply don't have any real competition in the current quad cross world and their performances are absolutely astonishing. And as seen here in Denmark, they can handle any sort of going. The US team has shown that sand is not an obstacle. Chad Wienan overcame the Italian Torini and moved up yet another place. The race was not even at the halfway stage and the Americans were already calling the shots in this third and final quad outing. 
the only one who flew in the faces was the Dutchman Mike van Grinsman, who was spectacular in the final race, leaving the Americans absolutely nowhere to go. Van Grinsman opened a commanding lead whilst the Americans played it cool. They had two equal results already and they could look forward to the valuable trophy again this year. Chad Wienan took second place and in third was the Italian rider Patrick Torini. But this was a hard battle with the Belgian Davy de Kuyper. And as you can see, the Belgian racer was more successful, so he moved ahead of Italy. And number one, Thomas Brown, was also struggling to advance with his Yamaha. At this point, it was obvious that the Americans were successfully defending their last year's overall victory from Cingoli, Italy. Just below the radar was the team from Ireland who quietly got on with the job and had some good, solid results. But here again, Thomas Brown, who was working hard, making up ground, just kept plugging away and that attitude paid off. Brown never gives up. He first conquered the German rider Manfred Zinecker and then began to focus on the Belgian David de Kuyper. The Belgians, like the Dutch, really do a lot in the sand, so the domination of the Americans was not as striking as last year in Italy, where the going was a good, hard, fast surface. But the steely determination of the US national team was once again great and Thomas Brown eventually overcame David de Kuyper. At this point in the race, the Americans were second and third. But that suddenly changed because the Netherlands had rotten luck when Mike Van Grinsen quit shortly before the finish. He'd been home and dry and it broke. So first place became the United States rider, namely Chad Wienan. And the US team could begin to celebrate consecutive titles. Wienan's countryman Thomas Brown also came good and earned all the accolades possible for his efforts. The Americans have picked up the lowest number of points and the overall triumph has come their way again. Second place was eventually won by Ireland and third awarded to Holland. The Americans have truly underlined their role as the biggest favourites. In the last race, the Americans took the first two positions and third went to the German Manfred Zeno. And that's how the overall standings look in the quad cross. And now the final race of this year's sidecar cross of the nations. It would decide whether last year's champions from the Netherlands could repeat their success of 2017. They were in a similar position to the Americans in the quad cross. Two good results were enough to seal the deal. The whole shot went to Frenchman Bastien Thomas with Sieba van der Putin. Kern Hermans and Nicolas Mousset were also in the mix. The number one crew, Etienne Bax and Kaspar Stupolis, were thereabouts too. Unfortunately, a technical defect accounted for the Belgian crew of Van Lukener and Van der Bogen. Kern Hermans and Nicolas Mousset overtook the French pair shortly after the start, and again, as in the previous race, they took off. But of course there was plenty going on, and in this case, the Latvians and the Belgians battled together. 
Davy Sanders, number nine, was scrapping with Didzis Gorbenko and went ahead of him. For Sanders and Haller, this meant a third place finish and Gorbenko and Koyev had to make it to fourth. Etienne Bax and Kaspar Stupolis, who in this case overcame the Czech Bukal brothers, were also looking for more, as ever. Bax, of course, is never content and fights very hard, completely without compromise. Moments later, Bax and Stupolis closed on the Latvian pair Gorbenko Koev and actually made it look quite easy. Bax chose the outer line and it was, as you can see, much faster. So Bax and Stupolis moved to fourth and this was just the start of the final Sunday race. Now there was another challenge awaiting the double world champion and he was called Davy Sanders. Bax was much quicker than the vast majority of the starting field and it turned out that the grand finale for this year was absolutely brilliant for the Dutchman. And just as before, Bax totally overcame these rivals, namely Davy Sanders and Andres Haller. Bax and Superlis were now in third, but then the crew got stuck in the deep stuff and lost time and valuable positions as a result. Davy Sanders had chosen another line, so he pipped Eddie and Bax to third place again. Bax, however, did not give up and once again began to catch up with his Belgian rival. The 30-year-old Dutchman is one of the biggest fighters in the field, and here in Denmark, we saw that with our own eyes. Similar problems also hit the crew of Bastian Thomas and Sieba van der Putin, and France's team lost valuable time in this deep hole. Meanwhile, Davy Sanders and Andres Haller were once again under pressure from Etienne Bax and Kaspar Stupolis, so once again, they had to defend. This time, however, Bax and Stupolis made it easier for them. Even the best get it wrong sometimes. I guess you could call that a racing incident. More time lost. Etienne Bax and Kaspar Stupolis showed great determination and carried on. And again, for the third time in a single race, they were back in touch with David Sanders and Andres Haller. To overtake, Bax chose the same line as before, but this time it worked. This was the move to second, uh, but that's as far as they got. In great form, Kern Hermans and Nicolu Mousset enjoyed Denmark. The number three crew won all their races, including the last one. And in the box, celebrations could begin because the Dutch had done it now two years in a row. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupolis were equally delighted, confirming the dominance of the Dutchman in this race. That's how the results of the third and final race of the Sunday programme look. The Dutch taking first and second. Eighth place for the Bukal brothers means a brilliant overall place for the young Czechs, which no one expected before the start. But now this is the podium for the quad cross category. Third place was occupied by the Netherlands, second position was won by Ireland, and the US riders could rejoice once more for a second year. Yeah, they are uh, the two motors back to back. They were really close together. It was, uh, it was a tough, tough day for me, but we got it done. You know, with uh, two second place finishes today, I believe, and. Uh, 
you know, really pulled uh, pulled the team together, you know, in uh, this last moto. These guys, these guys with the uh, one-two finish at the really hectic uh, long moto. It was a, uh, it was definitely a uh, a tough race. You know, this track was really, really, really rough and really, you know, you know, different compared to what we race in the states. So it's uh, it's it's really awesome to be up here. It's, it's amazing. And these are the overall results of the quad cross category. Just below the podium were the Norwegians, the British were fifth, and in sixth, Argentina. And there were six other rankings. In the sidecar cross, the Latvian bronze was applauded. The French hung on to second again, and the Dutch had a very successful defense of their title. Uh, my feeling after today's race is, uh, is great, you know, uh, we did not expect this, uh, this result uh, at the beginning of the weekend. We had two DNF uh, from Team Holland uh, with the qualification. Uh, okay, it means nothing, but uh, you know, we, need, uh, we, we, we did know that we need to push hard for today's race. And uh, this track was not easy to overtake, uh, it is quite narrow, narrow in some places. And uh, yeah, it, it did not make very easy, but uh, you know, more fun for us. Uh, we, we did start from the second row. In the first race, we even did start better as we did uh, many times this year from the first row. So it was, uh, yeah, for us it was a great weekend, and I think for us as team, uh, it was a great victory. The British can hold their heads up after Stagelsa. The Czechs finished fifth, and the young German team was ranked sixth. And there are six other teams in the overall ranking. Most of the celebrations were, of course, by the winning Dutch, but there was also great satisfaction in the camps of France and Latvia. So that was this year's sidecar and quad cross of nations from the wonderful Danish city of Slagelsa. Next year, the trophy in these two disciplines will be fought over in Germany. And that's all from us. Thanks for your attention, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. This program is brought to you by Live Signal, high quality live streams and TV broadcast. LiveSignal.tv. <laughs> the proud main sponsors of the event are Sport Event Denmark, Slagelsa Commune, and these other sponsors.